you can tell he just shows up, right? He's not, you know, partying for two months after he wins the Super Bowl. He's training the next day. He's still, you know, doing his TB12 method. He's still taking care of his physical body. He's still doing his mental work, right? He's still meeting with his 12 different coaches because he's looking toward the next Super Bowl. Now there, there, there are, you know, we want to celebrate our, our successes and all that, but the point is, is that in real estate, we need to do the, the real work. And this comes down to routines. You just got to do the work. What is up, real estate business builders? Uh, welcome back to another edition of the podcast. Today, we're going to dive into the three undeniable, irrefutable, critical habits of high-performing real estate agents. Guys, I wish it were different than these three, but these are the three that proved out for me when I got into the business. Uh, every agent that even came onto my team uh, and performed at a real high level. I'll get into to some of that. And, you know, 10 plus years into uh, real estate uh, B school and helping other agents grow their sales, grow their income, and grow their lifestyles, you know, all without the grind. Uh, these three are the three. So, like I said, I wish they were different, but they're not different. These are the three. Uh, let me start with a, a little bit of a backdrop here. So, as I'm recording this, we are in the midst of um, a little bit of a different flavor uh, in terms of what's going on in the market, but very similar to essentially an, 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 an income compression uh, in real estate. So there's just less commission checks available for the number of agents that are out there. This is a typical shift. Uh, this is not anything that's abnormal. This is the normal Every market has cycles and seasons, and this is just one of the seasons. What is different about this season is that there seems to be more fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Well, I don't know if there's more because uh, I I just checked out of it back in the day. You know, when I got, I got into real estate, it was the start of the Great Recession. Unbeknownst to me, three months after you know March 2007, I, I left my corporate job, March 5th, 2007 to be exact. And in June 2007, looking back, I saw, you know, looking back in like late 2008, I saw inventory June 2007 go straight through the roof, you know, all the way through like 2009, we had like over 20 months of inventory. So it was a different market because there was lots of inventory, but there was no buyers. There was just less transactions happening to the, to the point where we went from 15,000 agents to 5,000 agents in my market. So the, the backdrop to this episode is that there are agents that are going to enter into real estate uh, during these shifty, interesting, whatever you want to call this market, uh, uncertain times. And they're going to not know any better. And they're going to do a version of what I did back in the day. They're going to come out of the gate and sell like 40 homes their first year and then go on to do whatever, right? It's going to happen. And I think part of it is that they just don't know any better. They didn't go through the easy years, you know, 21 and 22, first half of 22, there were so many transactions flowing and it was, you know, it was easy to be in real estate. And, and they say, what a, a, a rising tide, you know. Uh, floats all ships or something like that. Well, now that the water, the tide has gone out, uh, you can really see who was, you know, swimming without shorts. I, I know I botched that whole analogy or, or that expression, but, but, but you get the point, right? So now that there's not a crazy amount of business to be had and, you know, everyone is swimming in commission checks. Now it really comes down to, are you willing to do these three habits that I'm going to go through? And so the backdrop is that this will always be um, these disciplines, these habits will always be the things that win no matter what. And the other thing that I've noticed about this, this season is that, and this is true of, 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 of any market. And I'll liken this to, uh, I'll tell a story about, you know, being, uh, invested in Bitcoin, uh, and, you know, Bitcoin has like wild highs and wild lows. And, you know, when, 
we're coming out of in, in this market, real estate's a market, Bitcoin's market. We're coming out of the Bitcoin market has been a season. I think we're in like phase one of the bull market now. So it's, it's, it's coming back and, and all of it. Uh, but it was hard to stay in the market when nobody was a fan of, of Bitcoin. And I'm not talking like back in 2017 you know, or 13, like the OGs of, of, of Bitcoin, but you know, staying staying true to the market and staying committed when all looks really bleak uh, is really really important. So there are some things happening in real estate now, and and you know we we do these uh, weekly mindset calls and we do production masterminds and lead conversion clinics and everyone's like, you know, what's the the litigation that just came down? You know, sort of picking on the the buy side. Uh, commissions, you know, the co-op splits and all of that. And, you know, big class action lawsuit. There are agents that think that they're, they're going to be extinct, that they might as well just opt out of the industry now because of what's going on. And I think it's like, man, what an awesome thing that we now have to prove our value on the buy side, which I've been doing since I got into the industry. So the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is is going on right now in real estate only the the true professionals will prevail. The amateurs that are in real estate that don't have ironclad mindset and aren't employing these habits will get out of the business. I am hoping you're not one of them. So that that's that my prayer. That's my wish. Uh, so let's get into it. Number one habit of a high performing agents is that agents uh, that perform in any market at the highest level are doing the real work. So that's number one is do the real work. And this involves routines. There's a really good book by uh, Stephen Pressfield uh, called Turning Pro, where essentially the book, it's an easy listen. It's about two hours. I, I highly recommend it, is that the pro shows up no matter what. The pro shows up whether they won the Super Bowl or they were last, 31st or 30, I don't know how many teams there are in, in NFL. Um, the pro is, you know, doing the activities that they know will lead to, to the result or the outcome that they want, right? So whatever you think about Tom Brady, right? He, he's a pro. There are stories he did. Um, there was a series on Facebook. It was like some a sh short... 12 to 15 minute, like six, um, what was it? Tom versus time or something like that, where like he is just pro level, you know, like he's watching film, you know, he's disengaged from his family, which I, I don't recommend if you're in real estate, you got to keep, keep tight with the things that, that matter, but you can tell he just shows up, right? He's not, you know, partying for two months after he wins the Super Bowl. He's, training the next day. He's still, you know, doing his TB12 method. He's still taking care of his physical body. He's still doing his mental work, right? He's still meeting with his 12 different coaches because he's looking toward the next Super Bowl. Now there, there, there are, you know, we want to celebrate our, our successes and all that. But the point is, is that in real estate, we need to do the, the real work. And this comes down to routines with PhD, pig headed discipline, no matter what, non-negotiable, you've got to structure your day in a way that's going to allow you to win and focus on the activities that make you money. We call these dollar productive activities, DPAs. There's only a few DPAs, right? It is new business development, which is lead generation and lead follow-up. There is um, meeting you know, with uh, buyers and sellers for the first time, signing them as loyal clients, and then getting them under contract. Building systems is another one, but most of your time, you should be obsessed and blocking your time to do those things, those three things, lead generation, lead follow-up and meeting, signing new buyers and new sellers. That was my obsession back in the day. The reason I was able to sell my personal production, my first four years was 27 transactions in, in my first 10 months, 44, 54 and 66. So <laughs> just at about four years, I don't I haven't total, totaled those up. But it, it allowed me to um, build out systems where I can leverage way beyond that, bring a team in. I had 10 producing agents that sold 453 homes. I worked 
you know, 40 days that year, um, about five years after I got into the business. So I was willing to do the real work, build the systems. And then I just surrounded myself with other people that were willing to do the real work. And I made it easier because they, they had no guess words and, you know, a lot of systems were sort of built out for them. Uh, so that's number one is do the real work. Number two is you have to prioritize. There's a saying in a, a Christian business owners group I belong to called C12. Priorities are what we do. Everything else is just talk. And there's a good, um, it's called the Eisenhower matrix is the time management tool, but there's a quote and I pulled it up here. Um, let me, let me pull it up here. It's Dwight Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower, urgent versus important. So, uh, it is, uh, so I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important, the urgent, let me pull it up here. It's, it's, uh, the urgent, uh, are not important and the important are never urgent. I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important. The urgent are not important and the important are never urgent. So as you look at your, your time invested in your business and it's this matrix of, of there's this really good app I've started to use, Tick Tick, T-I-C-K, T-I-C-K, that has an Eisenhower matrix and you put your activities into this matrix of urgent and important. So that going back to that to that quote, Think about all the things that you spend time on all day long that are in, in, that are urgent, but not really important. And think of like, if you want to build and scale a business, all the things that are critically important, like building systems and, you know, building sales processes and marketing um, lead gen levers and, you know, all of the things you could be spending your time on that are really critically important if you want to be financially independent and not give away your life in the process in real estate important things, but they're not urgent. Like it's the, the buyer that's, you know, texting you at Friday, in a Friday night about a property that just hit the market that they want to see on Saturday morning. And it's like, man, that, that really isn't important when it comes to the long-term vision I have for my business, but it's, it's urgent because I, I need that check. Right. It's like, um, a seller that interrupts your day because you had a showing at 12, PM and at 12, 11, they left the home and they're texting you for the feedback, right? It's urgent because they're a client of yours, but it's not really important when you're trying to sell two, three, four, five homes per month and take home 30 to 40 grand free and clear every month, right? So it's this balance of, you know, the urgent versus the important and priorities are the things you actually do and everything else is just talk. That's number two. Number three is a habit of high performing agents across the board is that they take care of themselves. This is physically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. So these, again, it comes down to, to, to routines. Uh, are you getting your workouts in? Are you hydrating? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating, you know, lean proteins and veggies, right? Versus like crap carbs and caffeinating. You know, there's four things in your physical body that you have to tend to. Emotionally, are you starting your day in gratitude? Are you ending your day with a practice of documenting all the amazing things that happened? Spiritually, what does your faith walk look like? Uh, I've gotten into this great habit with, uh, with my wife. We start the day every day. I read a devotional, uh, a devotion out of it. It's Paul Tripp, um, New Morning Mercies. There's a, a, a Bible, a suggested Bible reading. I read that to my wife. We do a, a meditation together on the Abide app, I-B-I-D-E. And then uh, she prays. She's an awesome prayer warrior. So that may not look the same for you. Maybe you don't. we don't share the same faith, but there has to be some routine that starts your day off on the right foot where I could, anything could happen in my day. And as, as long as I start it where spiritually and emotionally and physically like I'm, I'm firing on those cylinders. I have, I have no doubt, no matter what happens in the market, you know, because I'm in a different part of the market now, but my businesses suffer when real estate suffers, right? So when agents are hurting financially that I could throw my hands up and say, you know, agents aren't going to invest in themselves during these sideways times, but I'm, I'm not wired that way at all. I'm, I'm all about taking care of myself so I can show up 
the best possible way for my family, for you know my wife, my kids, and then also my clients, right? So that's number three. Are you taking care of yourself? A bonus one, and this is a habit. If you want to sell an unreasonable amount of real estate and not work evenings and weekends and have a crazy amount of money coming in, the habit of thinking like a business owner, that's my bonus. I'll probably do a whole episode on that, but the bonus here is, are you thinking about your business like a system of systems? So that one day, you won't have to be the person doing all the stuff. 80% of what a real estate agent has to do soup to nuts from a generated lead on the front end to a happy client and a past client you know, program on the, on, the, on the other end, the whole pipeline of a business, 80% of what an agent does is administrative in nature. And the only way to get out of doing admin work is to build a system and to backfill with an automation or a delegation. You know, you can hire a VA at $4 an hour in a super talented, you know, virtual assistant that's a full on team member at $4 an hour, which is $8,000 a year to leverage all the button clicking in your business, all the social media, all of the stuff that you need to do on a regular basis. You can hire someone to do it at, for less than one closing right? Full time. I'm, I'm in the process of hiring a guy that was the CEO. He's been a CEO and a COO before, and he's $4 an hour, right? And he's going to have a massive impact in our business because I think about my business like a system of systems. I'm going to scale my coaching business in a time where many of these smaller coaches um, are going out of business and just saying, man, this is not the right time. Agents don't have money right now. And they're getting caught up in the FUD cycle, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt cycle. So that's what I've got. Three plus a bonus. I hope you crush it. My prayers are that you absolutely dominate. You take your unfair share of the real estate market. No matter what's going on in your, on, on in your market, I know that you could separate yourselves from the pack and you can absolutely crush it. The only thing I have to offer you, and you guys know that if you ever want to talk about or even look at what it might look like to work together. That, I don't even know if that sentence made sense there. Um, go to rebsgrowthassessment.com, R-E-B-S growthassessment.com. There's a seven minute video on that page that details the, what I call the million dollar agent method. It comes with a absolute guarantee in a 90 day period. period. If you don't generate an additional outside of what you're already doing with my lead gen systems, my lead conversion systems, my sales frameworks installed in your business, you'll generate at least an additional $40,000 of gross commission income. If you don't, I'll give you a full refund for your investment. So go to REBS growth assessment, watch that seven minute video. If you're like, man, this sounds interesting. I think I can do this book in a call and we'll have a conversation about it. We'll talk to you soon. Be good. Much love, much respect.